Hello, hello, beautiful soul. Welcome on another episode of Unapologetically Abundant Podcast. I'm your host, Petia Kolobova, and I have such an honor to have today, tonight, with me, Victoria Gallagher. And she is not only love of attraction um, hypnosis, she's also an incredible podcast and a person. So stay tuned because today, before we start even recording, she started to release so much gold and goodness that I had to bring it <laughs> online. So Victoria, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. I, I'm honored to be here on your show and talking to your listeners today. So thank you so much. Thank you. And right before I hit the record button, I ask you, where in the world would you love to be? And you gave me such a beautiful answer. You said, I am exactly where I want to be. And that's so beautiful because very often we are stri striving to be in the next place and the next house and the next relationship. It's always the next, next, next. We are focusing versus being here and now and celebrating what is working. So before we will really dive into your story and the goodness of love of attraction that we are both such a big fans of, I would love for you, if you would be open to it, just for a moment, close your eyes and mm. I will take you on a morning, beautiful hike. Imagine that as you are breathing in and your body is in tuning with the nature all around you. Imagine that you are on a beautiful morning hike. The sun just risen up and it's a warm, beautiful, sunny day. The wind is so soft and blowing into your hair. And as you're walking, you're hearing the birds chirping. You are feeling so relaxed and your heart it's filled with so much appreciation. You're smiling because the sky, it's so blue and your life feels so, so good. And as you're walking and enjoying this beautiful morning, you meet a very young family with two little girls running around and playing with the branches and flowers, picking up the wild flowers. One of them runs to you, brings you a flower and asks you, who are you? What is the one thing you would love this little girl to know? Not what you do, but who you are. Hmm. I am inspiration. Hmm. That is so I, beautiful. Yes, I am inspiration. Wow. And isn't it so beautiful? Like we don't want to come here to this world and be enforcing our opinions or telling people who they should be or not. But if you can come here and being the inspiration of what is possible, if you can be the inspiration of someone having a better day or a better life, <laughs> that's so precious. I love that. Yeah, I absolutely love inspiring people. And, you know, that's the one thing that I really believe is my, uh, my soul's journey, my purpose. That's so you beautiful. Know, and yeah, it just... I, I wonder, Victoria, because um, I think you're, when I look at you, I think you're just like maybe one or two years older than me. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I feel like, you know, your soul journey here, it's, it's so profound and deep. And I wonder, it took me three decades to like really start discovering who I even am and why mm -hmm. I'm here. And I've been working on it for a decade, you know, to really know who I am and why I'm here. And so often we have this deep desire and this deep feeling inside. I know I am a meant for more. And we don't know what that more is. How did you find what is it for you, Victoria? How did you discover your soul's purpose? 
Well, you're exactly right when you say about three decades. It usually takes, I think most people, most people by the age of right around, you know, their late 20s, their early 30s, they have a breakdown, <laughs> kind of like I had. And yes, and I, I really believe that that is such a powerful year that that happens because even though at that time so I'll I'll take you back um at the time that I was uh you know right around that age I was um a stockbroker so I was in a completely different career altogether in the world of finance wearing a business suit every day getting up at you know, uh, four o'clock in the morning to be at work by 630, <laughs> making cold calls, <laughs> sitting in a big, beautiful office, though, and uh, driving a nice car, actually living in a uh, my own home, married to somebody different than I'm married to now. The whole life, my entire life was different. And you would think that with all those things, having a fairly nice wardrobe, having a fairly nice house, nice car, all of it, that I would feel happy and content and fulfilled and satisfied and, and uh, oh, and, you know, of course, a nice retirement account to boot. And so you would think, you know, I'm, gosh, I'm, <laughs> I'm only 28. I've got it all figured out. Everything's great. But of course, uh, such as life, um, you know, I just, I had that, uh, that, that breakdown where it's like, I could not force myself to get up at four o'clock in the morning and do what I was doing day in, day out anymore. It was like just something was just the resistance to going in and, and making those calls every day. And, uh, you know, and I like... I had really felt so accomplished when I became a stockbroker. I passed the Series 7. I got the job. I did all of that, and I felt so accomplished. But it was like I just hit this, this breaking point where it was like all of a sudden it was just like I didn't feel happy in my relationship. I didn't feel happy in my job. I was um, just not really happy. And so I kind of went on a little bit of a journey and I, um, I started doing some, uh, some therapy, which led me to taking a personal development seminar. And so when I took this uh, personal development seminar, um, it was like really the first time I'd ever done anything like that. And um, it was a four day seminar and we would, you know, come in, um, you know, Thursday night and leave, Sunday just completely transformed and uh, and the process that w that we went through um, was you know we would do a lot of the this inter inner work uh, doing the meditation doing visualizations uh, writing down writing things down uh, doing partner exercises and I was I just fell in love with this whole process of doing this 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 work this uh you know these this these closed eye techniques they called it and um so prior to that um i you know i did kind of have a little bit of uh um i i did have a little bit of experience with recording and singing and and things like that and so what happened was i decided during these seminars that I wanted to share this message with the world. And I wanted to develop my own uh, personal development um, recordings that I would sell um, on a website because, you know, I was having a lot, I, I was having a lot of breakthroughs at this seminar, but I was also having, um, you know, I was trying to get a lot of people to come and take these seminars, but people didn't want to, spend the money and they didn't want to, uh, you know, take the time to do it. So I said, you know, I'm going to create these very inexpensive recordings that where people can do this process on their own in the comfort of their own home. And so many people, um, when I told them this, I mean, this was back in 1999. <laughs> so, I mean, the internet really just kind of took off around, I want to say about 
96. It wasn't really, uh, you know, the, there, there wasn't really a lot of people doing what I was doing. And so people kind of looked at me like, you can't do that. You can't make a living like that. That's crazy talk. And, uh, you know, I like most people hadn't even shopped online, <laughs> let alone uh, download something from the internet. And um, so this was my dream. This was my goal. This is something that I decided that I wanted to do. And uh, so, you know, that was really how I got my, my start. And I I really, I thank my old boss because I was sort of pushed into the deep end of the water before I was ready. Um, I got, I got myself, <laughs> I got myself certified in hypnotherapy and one thing kind of led to the, the next. I ended up, um, you know, uh, opening up my own office. I got an office, I got a business license and in that whole process, my uh, my boss found out what I was doing, and you know, and and like I had mentioned, I was kind of burnt out, and so I wasn't showing up the way that I used to show up at work uh, in the in the initial days. And so he gave me an ultimatum, and he basically told me that you need to shut down that business um, because it's a conflict of interest, um, or you need to. Um, leave Mm -hmm. and you have 30 days to make a decision and understand that I only got certified in uh, February of 99 and this was July of 99 that and everything move was moving very quickly and um, so I made a decision (laughs) actually he gave me the ultimatum in June and and July 1st was isn't uh, it amazing like sometimes when you are really kicked out of the nest like I was like fired you know from my job unexpectedly so I became entrepreneur I would call it by accident if I would believe in accidents and back then it broke my heart and nowadays I'm so 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 grateful for it you know because I Sometimes we just can't see the whole picture. Sometimes we cannot see the possibilities. And I have so many clients who are either just starting their business right now or they want to leave their nine to five and they are scared. And sometimes when there is not this push or like a big breakthrough, they are not going to take the leap, you know, unless somebody kicks them. So I'm really happy for you that you got that kick like, oh, I have to do that, you know. And I love hypnosis. I love hypnotherapy. It changed my life. I absolutely love that. So I'm really happy that you went that route. And when I'm just wondering, you know, like just insert it into the story, but why love of attraction, you know, because there are so many different um, like, um, like avenues you can take in hypnosis. Why did you take love of attraction? I know. Isn't that interesting? So when we were doing the work in the seminar, um, prior to that, you know, I had read books like um, one of the mandatory books that we had to read um, when I became a stockbroker was Think and Grow Rich. Mm. And, you know, and, and I, I, I went back many times and I reread that. And that book, of course, is all about law of attraction. Um, also, the seminar, you know, it turned me on to all kinds of books, uh, books by Deepak Chopra, books by Shakti Gawain, um, you know, creative visualization. And the theme, like the very, very first thing, you see the sign on the ceiling, on near the top of the, the, uh, the, the wall, when you walk in, and the, the, the main theme of the seminar is to think is to create to think is to create. And so so this breakthrough into hypnotherapy, um, I didn't realize, I didn't have the word law of attraction available to me at that time. It wasn't, um, it, it just wasn't necessarily in my awareness right back then. But over time, as I was developing and creating a lot of my hypnosis programs, you know, you take from every, 
piece of learning. Every book, you know, gets it kind of incorporated into the way you talk and the way you think and the way you write. And so when I was writing a lot of my hypnosis scripts, I was writing about things like vibration. I was writing about things like turning up the energy. I was writing about, you know, visualize this and this becomes your reality. And I, I was doing a lot of that uh, turn up the feelings and all of the things that they were talking about fast forward to 2006 in the movie uh, The Secret. And so when the movie The Secret came out, I already knew all of what they were talking about in that movie. And, you know, honestly, because of my background and understanding law of attraction at such a deep level, I didn't even really realize how much was missing out of that movie. Like it just didn't even occur to me that a person who wasn't familiar with these concepts already, the way that they would view that movie and the way that they would think, oh, all I have to do is just sit down and and <laughs> and and think and think and think and then things will appear. And that's, in a way, there's a lot of missing pieces that the movie just doesn't have time to go into. Could you, and, could you share some of the pieces that you feel that are really fundamental that are missing in the movie? Because for many people that I know, the secret was the one that like really opened their eyes into possibilities, but then mm -hmm. they get frustrated like, oh, this doesn't work. So what do you mm -hmm. feel are the foundational pieces that are missing in that movie? So for one, um, I think having, you know, just these fleeting desires like, um, oh, I'm going to manifest a, a car and, and that, and it kind of gives a gives an idea that like you could just, oh, today I'm gonna manifest a car and tomorrow I'm gonna manifest a, um, you know, a, a diamond necklace. And it, you know, you really need to have like a focus um, for, you know, a, a you, you, I, and I'm not even gonna necessarily say for a, a certain period of time because time uh, really has more to do with alignment you're going to manifest um, when you get into alignment and that could take that could take seconds <laughs> that could take decades mm -hmm. to get into alignment and so um, so that's one of the missing pieces is I think you have to have a very authentic real strong clear focused desire um, not just something like haphazardly that like, oh, I'm going to think about this today and I'm going to manifest that. Another thing that I believe is really left out is dealing with the unconscious, the subconscious, your limiting counter beliefs. So you say that you want this and you say that with your conscious mind, the part of our mind that we're in touch with, that we're aware of, and, and we we know what we're thinking at all times when that's on the top of our awareness. But that is such a minuscule, tiny, tiny little part of our mind. The bigger part of our mind that actually manifests is the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is like 90, you know, let's just say it's anywhere between 90 and like 99% of our manifesting power. And so if we say want to be a millionaire or we want to be even uh, somebody who makes six figures a year or somebody who even runs their own business and generates a thousand dollars in a month i mean whatever it is if you want that but you don't believe at the deepest level un underneath if you've been trained your whole life to believe that money is the root of all evils it's bad to make a lot of money i can't make a lot of money i can't afford it i don't deserve it um, you know, there's all of these crazy, un, you know, these unconscious beliefs that we have, it's going to work against you. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, um, you know, since we're creating from that place, most of the time, uh, law of attraction isn't working for people because law of attraction doesn't give you what you want. 
law of attraction gives you who you are. Mm. It's simply a mirror reflection of who you are, which was really interesting when you asked me earlier, you're like, who am I? And I am inspiration. So I attract more things to feel inspired about to continue to be inspiration or to continue to feel inspired. Mm-hmm. So it's all, I'm a, I'm in alignment with that. That's and so I'm in alignment. Yeah. It's so beautiful, Victoria, you know, and, and I love that you're bringing it up. That's something that I also find out throughout my journey. You can do all the work you want. You can do, you know, manif- like journaling and writing and affirmations and meditating, whatever you want. However, if there are, in your core limiting beliefs that are really not aligned with your desires there is no way you can manifest your desires so i wonder do you have any specific ways or exercises that you can find out what your core limiting beliefs are and how to move through them i do i do and so you know so this whole um premise that I've come up with, you know, there, there's eight manifesting conditions that I that I thoroughly believe all need to be in alignment in order to, and it's just common sense. If you really think about these, these, these manifesting conditions, there's such common sense. You know, you've got to have a, a very clear desire. You've got to know what you want. You've got to be focused on that. Um, you've got to have your your thinking along that line. Now, a lot of times people know exactly what they don't want. They're always talking about how I don't want to be late. I don't want to attract jerks anymore. <laughs> I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to get sick. I don't want to uh, get fat. I don't, whatever it is, they they're just constantly talking about what they don't want. And so that's the thinking that needs to uh, shift into thinking more lines of what you do want. Because, as, you know, if, if I tell you don't think about a pink elephant, <laughs> what are you thinking about? A pink elephant. But if I tell you what to think, if I say, okay, I want you to think about a uh, you know, a, a, a blue whale, then that is what you're going to be thinking about. That's going to be the, the thought process. So the beliefs, it happens to be one of those manifesting conditions. And in my book, I have um, so many exercises. That's one of the things people always compliment me on and talk about. And they love my book. Um, one of the exercises that I have people go through is I have them um, do a, a silent meditation, a silent meditation where there's there's nothing else happening in the background, where they're thinking about whatever it is that uh, that they want to have, and they ask themselves what is getting in my way of having that you know what what's preventing me from having that and just you just ask yourself that over and over and over again until you know for about five minutes and then you just simply uh, come back and you write and journal those things down and you may end up as a result of journaling you may actually come up with even more uh, because writing is just another really profound exercise and tool uh, to help you to align in law of attraction. So you find out what it is that's blocking you. And when you find out what is blocking you, then you interrogate each of the things that are blocking you. So you, you ask yourself, like, is this really true? Is this true for everyone? Um, what's funny about this belief? You know, and I have a list of questions that you ask each of these beliefs and you literally, because if if you've ever, you know, watched somebody get interrogated, you know, like, where were you on the night of, you know, and they flash the light on and well, the whole point, the whole purpose of interrogating those people is to break them down, to break them down. So if you interrogate this belief that you have, you're going to dismantle that belief. You're going to realize that, you know what? 
maybe this isn't true. Maybe this, you know, maybe, and, and then once you realize and you've broken that belief down to realize that this isn't true, you just simply ask yourself, what do I want to believe instead? What's the, and what do I want to believe instead? It doesn't necessarily mean that that belief has integrated and that it's true, but you create the new belief and you create affirmations and, and sentences that you can say about that, that you can do in, in self-hypnosis. And I teach people how to do their own self-hypnosis, um, how to, you know, take out their phones and, and make their own visualization recording so that they can start to believe the new belief uh, instead. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit involved. I, I think one of the things a lot of people <laughs> want, um, want it all to be simple, want it just to be like a quick fix, want to just like listen to subliminals, fall asleep and wake up and that all their beliefs have changed and turned around. And I kind of wish that I wish it was that way. I mean, I could make millions of dollars. You, I, I absolutely agree with that. You know, that when it's like instant and easy, we will get bored very soon. Right. Yeah. Yet, do these help Victoria when we listen to guided meditation, when we listen to the hypnosis, when we listen to the subliminals, does it help or is it just, contraproductive because we are investing time in the external versus going into internal. I think there's a balance and, you know, so I believe in, um, you know, in hypnosis where you need to, um, you know, participate. Um, with your, you know, it's, it's an act, it, like you might look like you're asleep, but your mind is actually uh, participating and being very active uh, because, and, and I do believe that, um, you know, hypnosis works best when you're participating in the process through visualizing, um, through getting your emotions inv involved and raising your, uh, your vibration. And, and allowing yourself to um, experience the emotions because all of those is what makes it real to the subconscious mind. So what it, it's all about making it real, as real as real can be to the subconscious mind. And ultimately, the desires will come about because you are going to receive ideas. You're going to receive intuition. You're going to, um, the more you believe, the more your mind is going to be figuring it out in the background. You don't have to figure it out, but your mind is working all the time, figuring out how to, you know, to make this happen. And then all of the things that are naturally going on all around you, the opportunities that you don't normally see, you see them. You see them in a new way and you realize, oh, this is, this is an opportunity that I need to take action on. And then of course, nothing happens without taking action. You have to take action. Um, but people can take action all they want without having the having the belief system, having the correct, uh, you know, the focused desire, having the feelings. And if you're just taking action, action, action without all that in place, you might be spinning your wheels, yeah. taking action, taking the wrong actions. Yes, absolutely. You know, you can be taking action all day long, but if it's not aligned and inspired action, really, then it's not going to take you nowhere or it will take you to the places that the places are really not uh, meant for you. So I wonder, Victoria, what are some of your daily rituals that you practice to stay grounded and with really clear vision of your desires? Yeah, that's a great question. So I have a morning routine. And so, you know, and I, th I think it's really, that's such an important thing. And I actually do uh, talk to people about creating a, a morning routine for themselves or a routine. It doesn't have to be in the morning. It could just be, you know, it could be in the afternoon. But if I'm less inclined to do it if I don't do it in the morning. So my morning routine includes waking up and doing a at least a 20 minute um, silent meditation. Um, and then I go for either a walk or a run. Um, I find 
the balance, the mix of those two things, uh, just completely working on clearing my mind. When I say working on clearing my mind, it is a work, uh, a work in progress. Your, your mind is never like clear. Um, and, and that's one of the things that people need to understand about, um, uh, hypnosis and meditation is that it's never, the thoughts don't ever like completely go away. A lot of people think, oh, I can't meditate because I can't clear my mind. No, (laughs) the point of it is that you can't clear your mind. And every time you get a thought, you're going to circle that uh, back around to whatever it is that you are focused on, whether it's your breathing, whether it's your mantra, whether it's, uh, you know, the palm of your hand or your heart or whatever it is that you're focused on. And you're training yourself to have more thought control throughout the day. Mm. Oh, I don't feel like doing this anymore. Well, are you going to listen to that thought? You're just going to go down that thought train? Or are you going to get control of yourself and do what you said that you were going to do? Really so it is. And so I, I have to start with that. Um, going out and, you know, going for a walk or a run or a hike, um, you know, and, and I'm very fortunate to live in such a beautiful environment where I can do that. Um, you know, I'll do some walking gratitude, gratitude. I think gratitude is like so, so important. And it's easy for me to connect with my gratitude just because, um, I live in such a beautiful area in Arizona. I mean, there's just mountains all around. The weather's always nice. I mean, what is there not to be uh, grateful for? And you can just start with some of the most basic things. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say, oh, I'm grateful because I have millions of dollars in my bank account. You know, be grateful just for the fact that you have air in your lungs and and today and you're alive and that Mm -hmm. you can walk or that you have clothes or that, you know, just the most basic things and then it's very contagious and it'll just develop into more and more things oh yeah I'm grateful for that oh yeah this is great you know and 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 all of the things will eventually um, come to you and then um, I also write down my intentions so after I've you know done all that I write down what is my intention um, for today and sometimes I'll write it multiple times I don't have a exact way that I like to write but I just I don't even know what it is. I I couldn't even possibly explain it, but there's some power in when I write things down that I don't even know how they're gonna happen. When I write these things down, um, they're just much, much more likely to happen. And they just seem to kind of come out of nowhere from writing things down. I love that. I always say like things come like from the bushes, you know? (laughs) It, you know, I truly believe that when we write down things, it's like bringing the non-physical into the physical. And I love that your morning routine has all of these aspects, you know, truly like a mind, body, spirit. I'll take care of my mind. I will take care of my spirit. I will take care of my body. It's yeah. beautiful that you incorporate all of these plus you get really clear on your intention. Where am I heading today? Instead of just going through the day or get busy and then in the end of the day, you don't feel accomplished. So this is so, so, so beautiful. I love your morning practice. My morning routine, it's it's always flexible. Every day it's a little bit different. Yeah. But it's non-negotiable, you know? It has to be there because I know how I start my day, I will end my day. And And I do try to incorporate a little bit of reading every day as well. I mean, that to me, um, that's just, you're always, I'm always wanting to feed my mind. I just, I love learning. So whether it's taking an online course or uh, listening to a audible book on my walk, sometimes, um, you know, sometimes I just kind of kill two birds with one stone Um, or, you know, just reading something um, on Kindle. Um, I'm a kind of a digital girl. I mean, I like my hard copy books, but I also just, you know, it's easier for me to take my Whatever iPad. Whatever works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever works. I love that. But yeah, those are my, you know, those are those are my morning morning routines. So beautiful. I love it. I think like how we start our morning, it's going to carry that vibration for the rest of the day. And it's easier to start that momentum in the morning. So I wonder... What are the last thoughts, last thoughts on your heart that you would love to share with those who are just getting, you know, acquaintance with the law of attraction? What do you want them to know? 
You know, I want people to really get that if there is a desire or a dream in your heart, okay, that is a seed that was put there not by accident, that was put there on purpose, and it is your purpose, and it is your intention, and it, it, it is something that is 100% within you to go on and do and create. And you absolutely, absolutely deserve to be, to become the person who can manifest that thing. And that's what it really comes down to is it comes down to it's, you know, if, if, if you were, if you were, um, at the, uh, if you were in alignment already with that, you would have it right now. But it's there for you to grow and become the person who is in alignment with that. That's what it's really all about. I equate law of attraction with personal development. It's about growing yourself into the person who's in alignment with that dream, that desire that is in your heart and you deserve it. Thank you. That's so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that because I truly believe that it's really about becoming and evolving and aligning with the person who can have and handle these desires because sometimes we want something, but can you really handle it? If everything you ever desire, you can have it right now, right this hot moment. Can you handle it? I can't. I don't know about you, but like right now, I know that there are desires that I want along my journey, but not right now. Thank you. So thank you so much, Victoria. <laughs> this was super valuable. And I know that people can connect with you on your website that we will share. But are there any other places that you love hanging out with people? Sure. Well, um, I, I also have my uh, Facebook community. Um, my my Facebook page was is uh, Victoria Marie Gallagher .com, or Victoria Marie Gallagher off of Facebook, and um, then I also have my YouTube channel, um, my Victoria um, M Gallagher. I can't keep up with all of these uh, usernames, but on uh, you can find me on YouTube. Just look up Victoria M Gallagher on uh, YouTube, and you'll find me there. I have a lot of. Uh, tips um, there and uh, yeah Instagram all the places beautiful thank you so much Victoria not only for today and your time but also for all your work all these years for people and really being the inspiration that you came here to do I appreciate you thank you thank you thank you so much for having me on your show I really appreciate it